Hey, what's up? Hope everyone's doing really, really well, enjoying their weekend. Wanted to address uh, another common question I've been asked in my emails and messages, and that's any tips or things to watch out for when you're starting a new job. So I've been through this a handful of times. I've heard a ton of friends complain about this. Good experiences, bad experiences. I got six things today I wanna talk about. I think we can get through them pretty fast. They're pretty easy points to remember, and hopefully they help anyone out there who's trying to start a new position. First no-brainer thing that you have to do is that you have to understand the code. I have a video dedicated to this, which I'm gonna put in the description because I can't make those cool boxes anymore, but I'll have the link in the description where I talk really more in depth about how you can understand a code base and thoroughly do that because that's point number one of starting any new job. The most leverage, the single most leverage you can get as a developer is having control over the code base. So if you haven't checked out that video, please go check that out first. And that's point number one. You just have to understand the code. Second point I wanna talk about is that you have to be really patient with the projects that you receive because you won't always get really nice projects. You might get really crappy tasks. So I had one friend and she started a job pretty recently and on the same level as one of her coworkers. But you know, every time you start a job, you're, perce you're perceived a little differently based on how you got that job. If you interviewed really well, if you have a really nice pedigree, if you're from an elite school versus a regular school, but before you enter the job, no two developers come into the job the same, right? The companies are gonna perceive them very differently. So one thing that she noticed was that one of her first tasks to do was just tons of bug fixing, like not high visibility, kind of crappy work, just fixing bugs tracking tasks like putting notes in Jira while her coworker who started the same exact time as her he got this really big assignment of starting this brand new microservice you know very big beefy maybe more high visibility assignment so off the bat it seemed a little unfair because we start the same time we're kind of the same rank why do you have this nice sexy project and I don't so this is going to happen more often than you think. You might get a good project or you might get a really crappy project. My only recommendation when this happens is that you have to be really, really patient with your work because you're not always going to get the good things. The only thing you can do is whatever you're assigned, whether it's starting a whole new application or just fixing a stupid bug, you got to do it really, really well. That's the only thing. So as long as you do whatever you're assigned well, the good projects will come in the future. So don't expect the good stuff right off the bat. You're not gonna be working on the sexiest features, but whatever you're assigned, even if it's just a bug, do a good job of it, fix it well, and all that good stuff is gonna come. You just gotta be patient. Third most important thing you can do when starting a new position is that you have to become independent as soon as possible. So independence is a hallmark trait of any developer you know the first couple months maybe the first three months you can be handheld another engineer will guide you like through the code how to develop how to develop what's the workflow like but as quickly as possible you have to show that you can operate independently of anyone else you can always ask someone for help in terms of getting advice you know getting a second eye on things but in terms of pushing a feature through fixing something developing something you have to show your independence as soon as possible and that's what every everyone is looking for right that's how you're judged that's how we're judged as developers if you're a developer and you constantly need help someone else is always having to like hand hold you around show you what to do that's not a really good sign that's only that's cool for a month or two but as soon as possible you have to get independent with your work so that's point number three fourth important point I want to bring up is that don't try to outshine someone and this is the most nuanced point because it's most related to human behavior and it all starts with a little bit of your self-awareness and how your actions are perceived by other people so always always remember that the way you perceive your own actions is going to be very very different than how others perceive your actions so one example is that just talking in meetings for example, you might be really enthusiastic, always sharing your opinions, always have something to say, you know, always like want to contribute to the coding design decisions. But other people in those same meetings, they might think you're overstepping, you're trying to outshine them. So this 
happens all the time. The way you think your actions are perceived are almost completely different than how other people are actually receiving them. So you have to be really careful. Another example is like, if you like sending emails really late at night, you're working on something at, at seven or eight o'clock, that's cool to work on something so late, but don't be sending emails after hours because that just gives a negative impression to other people. Just wait until the morning to send your email. So whatever you do, anything you do, not only think about how it reflects on you personally and like, oh, this is how I behave. This is like what I enjoy doing. Everything you do, also think about it in the perspective of another person. Fifth, fifth thing to do, fifth tip for anyone starting a new job in software is that always when you present your code, make sure it's the cleanest, shiniest code that you can present. So when you're developing, you're going to go through constant code reviews with your team. Usually, unless you're like a one man shop, you're not just merging straight into master all the time. Whenever you change code, you got to open up a code review. People got to review it. People got to you know comment on it, approve it. And once it's all approved, then you can merge it. The key point is that when you put that code review up, when you actually get other eyes to see your code, you gotta make sure that code looks really nice. Even the smallest things, like code conventions, syntax, you know, does your code even make sense? Like, did you, is it sloppy anywhere? Because that single-handedly kind of contributes to how you're judged by all the other developers, you know? At the end of the day, if you can code well and you show that through all your code reviews, it makes a huge difference. If you keep, op I've seen other people, they just keep opening up a lot of code reviews, but it's not really ready. Their code is sloppy. They commit changes to the review after they make it public. You know, when you make something public for someone else to see, it's gotta be really nice. It's gotta be packaged up, look nice, make sense, intuitive. It just gotta represent your clarity of thought. So if you wanna be judged really well in terms of software, make sure your code looks good. Last six point, sixth and last point I want to talk about is kind of just a life social hack, but you have to understand basic psychology and human behavior. And it's really not that difficult to understand. You just got to interact with a lot of people, read a couple of good books, and that's that. Because the way you interact with people really will affect, you know, your work life, how you're perceived, like how enjoyable your work is a lot. So a couple basic social hacks I can share with everyone is that don't ever cut people off. When people address you, you're talking with someone, after they're finished speaking, always make sure you pause two to three seconds after you're speaking because it represents a lot of things in that pause. It represents you're acknowledging what they had to say, you're thinking about it, you just don't want to butt in, cut them off because if you talk immediately after they're finished, it shows that you've digested nothing that they just said. You were just waiting, waiting to get your point across and it just comes off as a little rude, cutting them off. So when people talk to you, just wait, take it in. All right, that makes sense. And then respond to them. So social hacks like that, there's tons of these things, but you always have to remember them and use them. Not many people think about this, but just think about a couple of friends you have. You probably have a couple of friends that you're probably known for cutting you off or they always have. They want to get their point across first. The real nuanced thing behind how they respond to you, if you notice those people, they always respond very quickly after you're done talking. They don't wait those two seconds. So that timing is really, really important. Another cool social hack you can do is always paraphrase what your counterparty has said. So if somebody is talking with you and you're trying to digest what they have to say, try to paraphrase what they just said to reaffirm your understanding of, you know, the conversation. Also, it shows them that you respect what they had to say. If you show that you are trying to understand, paraphrase, you know, organize your thoughts behind what they said, they're going to feel a lot better. So sixth and last point, this is not really like a software new job thing. This is like a life thing it's just social hacks to interact with humans better and you know this is not like rocket science you can there's a lot of books out there to do this read about it a lot of the times you're probably making a lot of mistakes you don't understand so you just gotta read and figure out what people are annoyed by so I just recommend reading a little bit don't be afraid of talking with people you know expressing yourself and also taking in what other people have to say because in the end to make your work life better your new job better is interacting with a bunch of people and you got to interact with them well so that's that all right guys that's it for the video I hope all these points were a little 
helpful. You know, if you're a software developer, whether you're professional, just switching jobs, switching departments, or you're an intern, or you're a senior looking for your first job, you're gonna go through this a lot of times. You're gonna be in new code bases tons of times. You're gonna meet new teams tons of times, worked with a lot of different developers throughout your career. Like these days, like you'll be switching maybe every two years or every three years, maybe every one year if it's really fast, but it's constant constantly in new environments and these things will usually always apply so for all the software developers out there good luck with your job search if you're starting something new maybe these points are helpful and you know best of luck and hope everyone enjoyed the video leave me a comment or like if you have any questions that you need answered a little more in depth i think email is better or just like the video so hope everyone has a great rest of the weekend and take care